I'm just saying. So, <laughs> you'll be all right. Okay. So far, so far, we have some formulas. First thing you got to know, what's the difference between arithmetic and geometric? Adding, Adding multiplying. Adding multiplying. So far, so good. Right? Easy? Okay, we have an a sub n formula for both. And what do the a sub n formulas do in they, both cases? They find, by given they find terms. Yeah. If you want to find the 74th term, you use that a sub n formula. And what is the arithmetic a sub n formula? a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. And what's the geometric one? a sub 1 times r raised to the n minus 1, right? So far, so good. Now, yesterday, we talked about s sub n's. Now, what do the s sub n formulas do? They don't just find the terms, they add them all together. So the example question we did yesterday was the auditorium. We have 20 seats in the first row, 22, 24, 26, 28. It was an arithmetic pattern, right? Because we're adding two, add two, add two. But we don't want to just know how many seats are in each row. We want to know how many seats are in the whole auditorium. So it's not just finding the terms. It's also adding them together, right? So there was two formulas for that. The first one was quite simple. It was the number of terms times the first term plus the last term. So you just add the first term and the last term together, times it by the number of terms, and divide it by 2. Okay. Wait, so... Wait, it's automatically going to be 1 plus 2 times 2. What do you mean 1 plus the number? It's going to be 1. So... In my auditorium example, right? Right? So let's say we know there's 20 seats in the first row, right? 22 in the next row, 24 in the next row, 26 in the next row, and so on and so on and so on. How many rows do you want in this auditorium? 50 rows. Okay? Yesterday we did like 400 or something, right? So, we're doing it for 50 rows. Do we know A sub 50? What does A sub 50 represent? The number of seats in the 50th row, right? So, if you were sitting in the last row of this auditorium, this would be how many people are sitting next to you, right? But it's not the total of the whole auditorium. It's just the last row. How would I find A sub 50? A sub 1, which is 20, plus the D, which is 2, because we're adding 2, and minus 1 would be 49. That formula would tell me how many seats are in the 50th row, which is, I don't know, somebody help me out. That'd be 98 plus 20, 118? Great, there's 118 in the last row. Right? Yeah. So, to find S sub 50, which would be the sum of the first 50 numbers of this sequence, all you do is take the number of rows, 50, times the first row, which is 20, plus the last row, which is 118, and you divide that by 2. And that will tell you the sum of all 50 numbers added together. What do you mean? No. Well, you could. S, S sub 1 would just be the sum of the first number, which would just be 20 in this case. Okay? What's the answer? 3,450? And that would be the answer to that question. Now, and again, remember the reason why this formula works 
Would you agree the next term would be 1 16, uh, the term before the 118 would be 1 16 and then 1 14, right? Add those two numbers together, first and last. What do you get? 138. Add those two numbers together. What do you get? 138. Add those two numbers together. What do you get? 138. You're going to keep getting 138, 138, 138, 138. How many pairs of 138 would you have? You wouldn't have the same number of terms. You wouldn't have 50 of them. You'd have 50 divided by 2 of them. That's why this formula works. There's 50 numbers. What, I'm really, what I really want to multiply by is 25. Okay. But that's why you divide by 2. Okay. I mean, you could divide this by 2 and just multiply by 25, but the formula just is prettier looking like this. Okay? Make sense? Now, remember there is a hybrid formula. In the hybrid formula, you can survive without. But I'll show you the use of it. The hybrid formula, again, was just a combination of these two formulas. It's just take this, because this is what a sub n is, right? And you plug it into there. And the other s sub n formula is n, two a sub 1 plus the d times n minus 1 divided by 2. Now, it's uglier, looks uglier, but again, and what's the difference? This one, you have to know the number of terms, the first term and the last term. I don't need to know the last term here, do I? No. I need to know the, the d value instead, right? That same problem that I just did, we did it in two steps, didn't we? Because we had to first find the last term, then we plugged that into the other formula, and we did it in two steps. With the other formula, I could have just did it in one step. I could have said the number of terms, 2a sub 1s, which would be 40, right? Because it was 20 and 20, plus the d, which we're adding 2 each time, n minus 1 would be 49, and divide by 2. I agree it's uglier, but now it's just calculation, and you'll get the exact same answer. Now I can do it in one step versus two. Do I care which method you use? Not at all. Can you survive this whole chapter without ever memorizing this formula? Yes. yes. But there's, just know, without it, there's going to be problems you have to do in two steps, or you could have done it in one step. Are you just going to have to memorize two of these? Yes. So why don't you just choose which two? I think these two are easy. And then we go from there. Okay? The rest of the chapter, the whole chapter is just going to boil down to, you need to know these formulas. Just take this S sub n formula, for example. There are one, two, three, four unknowns in that one formula. Generally speaking, I'm going to give you three of the four. You solve for the unknown. You might know the total of the first 50 terms, so you know the 50. And you might know the last term, but you don't know the first term. you got to solve for the first. So you're solving for this. Or maybe you're solving, you don't know the last term, so you're solving for this. Or whatever. Like, there's going to be, generally speaking, you're going to know all the information except for one unknown. If you run into a problem with two unknowns, ever, you got to think system of equations. You're going to need two of the equations, and you set up a system. An example of that is the last problem from the, yesterday's homework. So let's do number 42. That's the, probably the hardest question we've done so far. So everybody take a look at page 387. 388, actually. 388. All right, so 42, they give us a sub n is 45. The first thing I want you guys to understand is, what does that mean? What does a sub n equals 45 mean to us? 
one of the terms. Jet probably the last term, right? Okay, we just don't know is it the seventh term or is it the 480th term? Who knows? But one of the terms in the sequence is 45. Okay? And then they give us the D value is 5. And then they also say S sub N is 210. Right? We have to find A sub 1 and N. Now, what information did they give us? This is, if you add up n terms, we don't know how big n is, if we add up a bunch of terms, we get 210. Of that, the last term would be 45. And then 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, that's what you're adding each time. What do you mean? We know it's the last term. We just don't know, is it the 12th term? Oh. Is it the 13th term? Is it the 74th term? But we know 45 is the last term of this sequence. Okay. And we also could say this one's 40 and this one's 35, and right? Well, we like, we could do it that way. And we also know if we add them together, gonna it's going to equal 210. That's what we know, okay. right? But we don't know, is there five numbers in the sequence, or is there 20? So, what formulas can I use here? I would use the hybrid method. Why? Because you have your D. Okay, you do know the D. I would say, let's start with the one with the last one. Okay. Okay? So, 210 has to equal that fraction, right? Out of that formula, what do I know? Do I know the number of terms? No. Nope. Do I know the first term? No. no. Do I know the last term? No. That's 45. All right, so I have one of my two equations I need. This is going to be a system of equations. I will tell you it actually doesn't matter which of the other two equations you use. If you want to use the other S sub n formula, you can. Or you can use the A sub n formula. Great. So a sub n is 45. 45 had to be the answer to an equation. What's that equation? a1, which we don't know, plus the d, which is 5, and n minus 1. So there's my system. How you solve this system? Up to you. I would use substitution, but it's up to you. There's your system of equations. Because I wouldn't use elimination, because if you got to simplify this, you'd have to distribute. Then you got a n time, n sub 1 times n, and that's going to mess things up. So I would just use substitution. First thing I would do is simplify this thing. 5n minus 5. Let's solve for a sub 1. What would a sub 1 equal? 50 minus 5n? So that we can substitute into there, right? Okay, so 210 would equal the n, which we don't know, times a sub 1, which is now 50 minus 5n plus 45 divided by 2. Now I can butterfly, right? So that makes that 420. I can simplify this into negative 5n plus 95. Okay. Distribute. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to get 420 equals negative 5n squared plus 95n. Now I got a quadratic. So how do we solve quadratics? We get everything on one side, right? I would make the right side 0 in this case, so I can make that 5n squared positive. Negative 95n plus 420. All right, we can make our life a little easier by dividing by 5, right? So n squared, what's 95 divided by 5? 19? 
420 divided by 5. You got to help me out on that one. 84. All right. What two numbers multiply to 84 and add up to 19? How about 7 and 12? What's 7 times 12? 84. What's 7 plus 12? So that means I have two answers to this. So what that means is I could have 7 terms in a sequence or 12. So, so let's, I want to show you how this actually does work. This is not part of the answer. I just want to show you why it works. We know 45 is the last term, right? So count these out. 2, 3, 4. Yes? So we know those are going to add up to 210, right? All right. So now it would be the same five terms again, right? plus more. So that's only seven terms, right? 10, 5, 0, negative 5, negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12. What basically happens here? What happens with those other terms? They just cancel each other out, and then you're really just adding the same number of terms. So yes, you absolutely can have two different patterns start in different places but end up adding up the same numbers, right? So that could work. I would not want you to do it this way. Once you find your n, how do you always finish any system of equations? Don't you just plug it back in? Back to one of the equations? So I would plug it right here, right before you substitute. What's 50 minus 5 times n? 5 times 7? 15. So yeah, we started at 15, didn't we? And then if you plug in a 12, 5 times 12 is 60. 50 minus 60 is? Negative 10. So yeah, one of the patterns would have started at 15. The other one would have started at? Negative 10. Can you always work recursively? Could I have, at the very beginning of this, when I started kind of doing this, I knew it was going to add up to 210. I knew the last term was 45. Could I have just went 5, 5, 5, 5, and then just add them up and see how many add up to 210? Yes. And I probably would have only gotten half the points on this one. Because you would have found it after 7 and go, oh, the answer is 7. But you wouldn't have found the 12. There is going to be systems of equations. Yes. This would be by far the hardest thing I would ever put on any test, but probably not. Not to this extent. This is, if you can do this, you can, I can guarantee you can do everything on the quiz. Or test, the whole chapter. Okay? Now, the other thing we talked about was the sigma notation. Oh, no. What does this mean? Okay. Sigma means sigma. Thank What does the sigma mean? From there to there, but all of them in between too. But what does it mean? Add them up. All it means is add up, starting at the first term, ending at the eighth term. So this basically means add up a sub 1, a sub 2, A sub 3, all the way till you get to A sub 8. That's all that means. Add up the first 8 terms of 7n minus 2. This, I would recommend the formula. How many terms are there from 1 to 8? There's 8 of them. You're adding up eight terms, aren't you? Yeah, Okay. How am I going to find the first term? Plug in a one. What's seven times one minus two? 
5. How am I going to find the last term of this sequence? Plug in an 8. What do you get? Try again. 7 times. Okay. And then it's just a matter of calculating. Figuring out what 59 times 8 divided by 2 is. That's all that is. What is it? 236? The benefit of this over S sub n, even though you're using the same formula, is you can do problems like number 6. Because number 6, which was part of your homework, what is number 6 asking us to find? Add up what terms? The ninth the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th term. We're not starting at the first term now. But you can use the same formula. Whoa. Wow. That's why I break these. Okay. Okay. Here's the hard question. How many terms are there? How many terms am I adding together? Five. Five. How did you get that? Okay, you can count on your fingers, or the shortcut is subtract them and add one. You always subtract them and add one. It even worked with this one. What's well, 8 minus 1 plus 1? It works. If you just subtract the two numbers and add one. What? You start, so what this is saying is add up a sub 9, a sub 10, a sub 11, a sub 12, and A sub 13. Okay, so that's not like an actual number. No, it tells you which terms you're adding together. Okay. That's all those two numbers mean. Start here, end there. How you find the terms, you plug in the numbers. So there's five numbers we're adding together. Yes. Now the first term, plug in a nine. What do you get? 15, right? How am I going to find the last term? Plug in a 13. You get 26, 23? Now you just calculate. Okay, but where did you get that whole thing? Your two came plus three. That was part of the problem. So they gave you that? They gave you that. Okay, and they always gave it to you like that? Mm, yes and no. So everybody look at page 387. Look at page 387. Sometimes you're going to do problems like one through six, where it's they give you this, You've got to find what it all adds up to. But you just use the formula. Easy? Okay. Now I want you guys to look at question number 25. They give you, what is it? 3, 7, 11. Right? They give you the pattern. What are the directions asking for? You have to write the sigma notation for the first what? So what goes on top and bottom? Because what are the first six numbers? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you start at one, you end at six. Wait, wait, okay. Yes? Yeah. Now, what you have to find is the formula that if you plug in a 1, it's going to spit out a 3. If you plug in a 2, it's going to spit out a 7. If you plug in a 3, it's going to spit out an 11. We have a name for that formula this chapter. It's called the general term. We have a formula for that. It's a sub n, which is a sub 1 plus d n minus 1, right? What's my a sub 1? 3. What's my d value? I don't want anything in my n value because I want to be able to plug in a 1, plug in a 2, plug in a 3, right? So, could you put this in there? Yes. I have higher expectations where you distribute and you get 4n minus 1. That goes here. And should you be able to check it? Plug in a 1. What do you get? 3. Plug in a 2. 
and it works. This would be the answer to 25. Okay. So it's going to be one of the two with sigma notation. Think in the parentheses is just your general yes. Term. It's just your general term. Just like you did in section one. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. What are the question numbers we did? Every third up to 42. Distribute and combine like terms. 4n minus 4. That's all I did. Nothing fancy. Okay. Now. Okay. Before you guys go. Okay. Um, briefly, you guys will come back. Quiz Monday. Okay? Over the first three sections. Okay?